Gemini 2.5 just came out and it is an incredible model and coding. In this video, I'm going to show you what it looks like within Cursor, which it was just released in, and just a quick demo that I wanted to show you. I was playing around with this model earlier this week after it came out, and one thing that I found incredibly impressive with the model is its ability to follow instructions but also generate coherent code. If we look at the example on the screen here, now mind you, this is sped up about four times. What it's doing is writing a simple but very involved 3JS game. As we can see here, there's a car, there's a city. I'm asking it a number of different questions related to the game to generate buildings and roads and emulate other cars. And with every single request that I put through to the model, it was able to generate a very long, but comprehensive and most importantly working example of what I had asked for. This is just a very simple game, but I built this in just about four prompts, not even a syntax error. What I'm gonna do within here is I'm gonna leverage a little bit of the agent mode within cursor, but I'm also gonna be leveraging some of the command K and just highlight some sections when need be. And we'll just see how far we can get with a simple full stack application. The first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna bun create next app within the root of our directory. And what we're gonna do within this is I'm gonna start with our homepage and I'm gonna say, I wanna build out a technical blog called Developers Digest. And I want the overall theme to be Neo Brutalist. Let's make sure we have a broken out header as well as footer with a number of placeholder links in both. I'm going to go ahead and send that through. And once we have that back, I'll go ahead and take a look at the results. All right, here's the theme of our website. And if you're not familiar with the Neo Brutalist theme, I think it was popularized originally by Gumroad. So they have all these fun sort of colors throughout within it. So now what I'm going to instruct within this is I want a technical blog post section. I want three different example blog posts all within the markdown format. Let's have them about AI related topics and I want a specific folder for all of those blog posts. Now, the one thing you'll likely run into with Gemini 2.5 Pro is the rate limits. They are working on trying to extend the rate limits within Cursor, Windsurf, as well as their API right now, but that's something that very well could take some time. Now, if I go within the articles tab, we see these three different articles. We have the rise of AI and modern web development, understanding large language models, so on and so forth. So if I go within this, we have our blog post here. And the nice thing with Markdown blog posts is the way that they're structured is they're going to have a similar format to this where you'll have a title date summary. Sometimes you'll have some other metadata within this. And that is the portion that is going to be parsed that is put within these various areas. Next, let's add in three other sections as well as some placeholder pages. I'm going to say I want to add in three cards below that section that we had just created on the home page. And I want each of those cards to still be in the Neo Brutalist theme, but I want them to be different colors. I want the first one to be games. I want the second one to be chatbot. And then I want the third one to be AI image generator. And with all of these, I want them each to have placeholder pages with a really nice hero area that will have the title of each page. And I'll go and I'll send that in. Now we have our three sections. We have play games and we have this new games page. We have our chatbot page. And then finally we have our AI image generation. What I'm going to do is I'm going to work through these different pages and we're going to see how far we can get. The first page that I'm going to go with in here is I'm going to say I want tiles for three different games. I want Tetris, I want Asteroids, and then finally I want a really creative 3JS game with a plane, a runway, as well as some scenic mountains. Now within here we have some creative images, Tetris, Asteroids, as well as Mountain Flay. So now what I'm going to say is based on all of the games within the games tile on the games page, I want to build out all of those games in full on their own respective pages in a Neo Brutalist theme. It will be interesting to see if it will be able to create these games in one shot, as well as how well it will actually fit the overall aesthetic of our site. Well, in this case, it asks for some clarification, and I'm just going to specify for it to proceed. Now, in terms of the games, there are pages for each of the games, but they're still just placeholders. What I'm going to say here is let's actually make all of the games actually work, set up all the game logic in an object 
oriented manner. We'll go ahead and we'll send that through and then we'll circle back and see what it generates. Here it asks if we wanted to start with Tetris first. I'm gonna go ahead and say yes. It just went and wrote out a ton of code here. We have about 500 lines of code or so. I'm gonna go ahead and save that out. And now if I go over to our Tetris game, we now have what looks to be a Neo-Brutalist Tetris game. I have the yellow shapes here. I have the green shapes here. And it looks like it works. I can even rotate these shapes like you would expect. I, I can have them go down faster if I hold down the button. I can restart the game with the press of R. And then a similar thing is I can do a hard drop to get them to the bottom of the screen. It worked with Tetris without a flaw. Now let's instruct it to do the same thing on Asteroids. I'm gonna say that was perfect. Let's continue on to Asteroids. And in a similar fashion here, we have another impressive generation. And here we go. I can go and I can shoot all of these different Asteroids on the screen here. I can also go and I can traverse. We have game over. I can click R and we have all of the instructions here. Again, very impressive. Also very fun to be able to just create these old school Atari style games on the fly, as well as it fitting the overall aesthetic of our site. Finally, and possibly most impressively, we're gonna generate the mountain flight game. Now I wanna generate the 3JS flying game. I wanna make sure we have obstacles. There's also collision detection and there is also the ability to shoot from the plane as well. I want the sky to be blue, the ground to be green, and there also to be a runway. Since the first two games did do really well, and obviously it can generate several hundred lines of code coherently without any issue, what I wanted to do is just add some even further detail to our 3D game here. We see within here, the agent determined that it is gonna need to install 3JS as well as the types for 3JS and we're going to see it just work through the structure of the page, similar to how we did within Asteroids as well as Tetris. Now we see this generation here. Now what's pretty amazing with 3JS is what it's able to generate in just a number of lines of code. Within here, we have under 300 lines of code, but you would be surprised if you haven't used 3JS before what you can generate with that amount of code. Here is our game. There definitely is an issue. It does look like it's rendering below potentially the grass type of area, but on refresh, if I just refresh repeatedly, it does look like we do have some objects within the regular area there. It looks like the plane isn't actually really shaped as a plane, first of all, and more importantly, it's actually rendering below the world. I wanna be able to make sure that it's above where the runway is, and I want the perspective to be from behind the airplane, but I also want the ability to control the viewport with my mouse. This one definitely does look like it is struggling a fair bit. If I did reprompt it, I wouldn't be surprised if I do have a decent generation. I have tried something like this before where it does give a relatively good generation, but in this case, it doesn't seem to be but with just a few shots in this example, it doesn't seem to be doing it quite yet. Next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and set up a simple chatbot within this style of UI. Now what I'm gonna say is now on the chatbot page, I wanna leverage the V4 version of the OpenAI SDK, and I want to integrate GPT-40 as well as GPT-40 Mini within a dropdown. Now, remember, I want the chatbot to be in the Neo-Brutalist theme, and let's make it colorful as well as all the messages that are sent back and forth. Have them be fun colors that are changing with each message. I'll send that in. Now, what this task will involve is we'll have to set up an endpoint. I'm just going to plug in an environment variable for our OpenAI API key. What I'll do within here is I'll just put in a .env and then I'll grab my API keys. All right, here is our chatbot. We have our dropdown. If I say hello world, I'll send in a message. We see that thinking there. We have this is a simulated response from GPT-40 Mini. I've already added in my environment variable for the OpenAI API key. Let's wire that up to have the messages stream back as soon as they come in. If I try this out, a hello world. All right, so what's interesting with this is what it actually decided to use, if I go over to the chatbot page, is even though I specifically asked for the V4 version of the OpenAI SDK, what it decided to use was the AI SDK from Vercel. 
Now that might be because we're within a Next.js project and it has a bias towards, but it is interesting that even with it taking its own direction, it wasn't quite able to update this. One of the things that I've noticed, especially for newer libraries, is sometimes the training data can be weighted towards different versions. And sometimes it can get a little bit mixed up. There could be a deprecated method, for instance, in the latest version when it goes to try and install that package and it's trying to reference something in the training data that might not be the way that it's intended to be set up right now. That's just one theory. Overall, it's almost there. We could probably get there with just one prompt. If I take this and I could say on the front end, it's rendering the following and I'll paste all of that in. Now, just to try this one more time, I'll say hello world. And there we finally go. Now we have a working chatbot. I can say, write me a short story on LLMs. I'll send that in and there we go. It's generating all for us. We have these nice fun colors. It's streaming out. We have all of these nice fun colors and it's relatively fast as well. GPT-40 mini, it's obviously a smaller, less powerful model. But what's neat with this is I've built this entire application with just natural language. Now, just to move on to the final step here, but on the image generation page, I wanna build out an image generator. On the left-hand side, I want a pane to have a user put in the description of what they like. And on the right-hand side, I want to show the image. And finally, I wanna store the previous generations below. And I just want those to be referenced from the URL that we get back from OpenAI. I specifically just want to use Dolly 3 in this example. Another question that I do get a fair bit on my videos is what program do I use to transcribe my voice? And I use Whisperflow, so I'll put a link to that within the description of the video if you're interested. Within one shot, we have this generation here. Within here, we have this new API endpoint for image. And within this request, it looks like we're making that request to Dolly 3. We're using the OpenAI SDK in this case. And it does look like it potentially is exactly what we want. Let's just go and save this out. And now here we go. Well, we have our AI image generation model. I'll click generate. We'll wait for it to generate. We also have this nice loading state where it's fading in and out within the area where it's going to generate an image. And now this is actually a good error because it's just indicating for us to set within our Next.js configuration here to include this. I'm going to say include the following domain and I'll just paste in the error that we have there. So within Next.js, you just have to make sure you add in the images as well as the domains that they're coming from. Now I'll try a cute cat wearing sunglasses in a neo-brutalist style. I'll go ahead and I'll send that in. And then there's our generation history. Now I'll say a cute dog wearing sunglasses in a neo-brutalist style. And hopefully we'll have those generations just below on the page here. And there we go. So we have our dog, we have our cat, Overall, very impressive. I'd probably say this is one of the best, if not the best coding model that I've used for these day-to-day -day type of web development tasks. We were able to generate two successful 2D games. We were able to get started at least with a third 3D game. And then finally, we were also able to set up the basis of a simple blog and we have this full stack site now. Otherwise, that's pretty much it for this video. Hopefully you found this video useful. Maybe you learned something potentially on how you can prompt these different models. Now, obviously I'm coming at this from the perspective of coding for many years. So being able to direct LLMs in a particular way, I am biased to having a little bit of experience in building applications myself, but hopefully for people that are maybe a little bit less experienced, you could take something from some of the prompts potentially that I use overall, just see what Gemini 2.5 Pro can do, as well as what you can do within Cursor. That's pretty much it for this video. If you found this video useful, please comment, share, and subscribe. Otherwise, until the next one.